to contemplate and meditate, that we don't meditate in silence. And meditation in silence can lead to a lot of difficulties that you open up and over examine issues and problems and anxieties and depression. Many things will come from trying to meditate in silence and the way of tafakkur, the way of tasawwuf was to make your muraqaba through the sound that open up your ears to hear the sound, to feel the vibration and to feel the love of what's being recited. Like we said last night, it's not important what language it is because everybody loves nature and nobody understands what the birds are saying, what the ocean is saying, what, what anything in nature is saying. So it's not a matter of my mind understanding but for me to actually hear with my soul. Are you really hearing with your soul? Or is it only goes to the superficial head and then blocked out? So then the first levels of tafakkur and meditation is that they close everything off and that they put a sound when they're going to medica meditate. And that that sound should be blocking any whispering that coming to the ears. So I mean that's the importance. So people walk in and say, oh why kind of when meditation is this? These guys are very loud. It's exactly that because we're not the kind that, you know, meditate in silence because then you over-examine and that can become like crazy people. Overthink every issue in life and before you know it you're way out there. So tafakkur is supposed to bring a sense of calm and peace into the heart. So then you put the, set up your scenario that I'm in a ocean of light my Lord, in front of me light, to the right of me light, to the left of me light. Behind me light, above me light, below me light because in reality in these six directions you're actually being attacked by negativity. Every direction is a negative force trying to bring you down. It's a football game, you have the ball and Satan is running after you. If you don't know it, he's probably already tackled you. But if you've been inspired to come to these types of association, it's a reminder that we're not getting a free pass into paradise and into world of lights and then I can just say, I want peace and peace comes. It's the reverse. When you want peace, you have to fight for it. You have to only fight yourself for it. Nobody else because that doesn't bring peace. It means the, the great struggle, the great struggle is the struggle against myself. So then the awliyaullah come into our lives and begin to teach. Awliyaullah are those whom are enlightened and God gave them a light and a reality and sent them back amongst mankind to bring them back to the ways of love and muhabbat, the ways of peace and moderation. So as soon as they fight, they fight themselves. That I realize that at every direction there's a negative force coming towards me. So then my meditation and my tafakkur is to open that reality and that sense of peace. So then I'm going to play these beatific sounds. Whatever the sound is that you find to be beatific and opening of your heart, the warmth within your heart coming, Qur'an, Gurud al-Sharif, Nat Sharif, Salawats, whatever people want to listen that you feel is bringing a softness to the heart. You repeat it because you can repeat something a thousand times and you don't know on the 900th and 99th time somebody got it and they say, oh, and now I understand what you're talking about. For years people can sit with you and they hear it and hear it and God says, they have ears but they don't really hear. They block out 99% of what you say and Allah knows what they're taking from what your lectures. So the concept of continuously repeating is also for the benefit of myself to recalibrate myself is our meditation, our tafakkur is under extreme duress. We don't meditate in a peaceful quiet environment. We're trained to meditate in the loudest and most crowded and most aggravated condition because if you can connect in that then you can find peace throughout your busy life. But if you're saying, no, no, has to everything be serene, quiet, everything has to be perfect, you're not going to find that spot on this earth anywhere and therefore then you will never meditate. 
So meditation was in the busiest environment, in the crowded environment, in every type of difficulty. I put my nice ear pods on, I play my sanawats, and I begin to train on how to connect my heart. And there's a light within my heart and I've given a certain amount of time and God has given everyone that light, gave us a life. If you ever ask yourself, why has God given me life onto this earth? If you believe there is a power that is supreme and He's the originator, the fashioner and the architect. For every scientist and every intellectual person realize there's a hand, there's somebody who has designed everything. If we believe in that supreme power, means then there's a reality that has been put upon us, why have you created me? Did you create me as a source of entertainment? I come, I play like an avatar and then I leave this earth? There must have been a purpose in my existence. If not then we have a very petty and horrible existence. If there's no reason that we're here, there's no special cause for us to be here, then only Allah say, no, no, it's exactly. As a matter of fact, your seed your, your, not your jad, would be your children, your, your brothers and sisters. When your father met your, wife, your mother, 500,000 hajis went into her womb. Are we getting where we are? We're wondering what is he talking about hajj? 500,000 hajis went into the womb of your mother. So people want to know what is the Kaaba and what is Hajj, it's right there. Haramain means no haram. So when they say the Haramain, the Kaaba is a one egg, is a oneness, is a one seed. It's surrounding no haram. And the same for the womb of a woman. Her womb is the Haramain. No haram should be upon her stomach, she's not to reveal her stomach. She doesn't belly dance and show her belly because God has given her a secret at her stomach. She has the power of birth and creation. As soon as these 500,000 hajis are released into the womb, they're fighting to kiss the black stone. Now Allah saying, do you see the hajj? Do you really have eyes to see? Don't you see? And then you go to school, take biology and you look at the microscope and you see all these little hajjis in white. He said, my God, this is hajj. <laughs> I see these guys all in white, there's no identifying group. And they're all going after the Kaaba. And they're all fighting to get to the Kaaba and one will kiss the black stone. One when he gets there, Allah says, this one got the key, got the ticket. And as soon as he kissed the stone, he entered into the egg. So it means that we are the lottery winners. You're not here by accident. That you do what you want with your life, destroy your life, throw your life to no purpose and to no end. God is going to call you to an account and say 400, I don't know numbers are what, 999,9999 did not make it. They went. You got the ticket. Now what you did with that ticket? You went into the egg, you went through all the difficulty of being in the womb and then Allah that's why Ar-Rahman is the one al ashistawa that Sifat Ar-Rahman Allah said, I sat upon that Sifat Ar-Rahman, Allah's might is upon Sifat Ar-Rahman because the Rahim of the woman is that secret of birth. When the egg enters and the sperm enters and becomes a creation going to be formed, as soon as that creation is born, Allah gives it a noon, gives it a light and a noon and it's now under Rahim, Noon, Rahman. It's granted its existence under the attribute of Rahman that I sent you as a mercy. You enter through this creation as a mercy 
you uh, appeared into this existence with a noon and a nur and a light. What are you going to do with this light that I gave to you? Then our life becomes a reflection of that reality. When you look with your children, because Prophet described that your family, 50% of your deen is your family and all the loved ones that you have around you. And you look to your family and you begin to realize that you gave your child a life, a good life. From whatever means you could, you fed them, clothed them, housed them. And the greatest distress you have is if they don't take care of themselves. If with the life you gave them, they are destroying themselves. They are drinking themselves to death. They're doing their drugs to death. They are wasting themselves on a couch and not doing anything but video games. It is the greatest torment for a parent, unless the parent is high and, and not in their aqal. A normal parent, their jahannam is to watch their children perish before them, <coughs> waste the very existence that God has given to them and that they have given to them. I fed you, I clothed you, I gave you, I sacrificed. Many parents work two jobs to put their children to school, to, to do whatever they can. And this is why Allah says, half your deen is a family because everything Allah asks of you and asks of me, we are also asking from our loved ones that I'm giving to you and you're not going to do anything with it. And this is how you want to destroy it and disseminate and decimate it and bring it down to nothing. And your life becomes a heartbreak for all of your existence on this earth. Then Allah says, if you're sad from that, imagine my sadness for you. And so Allah doesn't have attributes, no, but this is for us to understand God Almighty does have a love for His creation. It's not the, the tormenting His creation. Of course He has a love for His creation and He only wanted the best for it. I gave you the lottery, I gave you an existence, you came now into this world, what are you going to do with it? He gave us the noon and we came through the womb, we took a breath, now we're under Rahman and that noon is a nur, is a light. That light is a, like a little candle within the heart. And Allah was just saying that this is only a temporary candle. Your purpose on this life was to worship me. And they describe the vastness of worship. Worshipping is not only salah and praying. Worshipness is working hard. Worshipness is meditating. Worshipness is taking care of your family, their needs, their desires, spending time with your family and your children. Worshipness is everything that good. They say even cleaning your home is worshipness. It shows thankfulness to Allah that you gave me this home. You gave me a car, you like the car, you don't like the car, it doesn't matter. It's for us to show gratitude. That's why all these successful programs of gratitude because it brings divine mercy and, and grace in our lives. So my life was to worship. My life was to be of service, not to serve myself and entertain myself and obliterate and destroy myself, but to nurture a light that was given to me on how to serve. My Lord, I want to do kind acts, good acts, I want to help other people. Just like I don't like to see my children destroy themselves, God does not want to see you destroy yourself. So this light that He's given to us, everything we do is how am I nourishing this light. My Lord, this light that You gave to me like a very precious candle, so then they may give you like a little test that take this candle and walk around with it and pray that it doesn't blow out. For if that candle should blow out, you are finished. And just walk around with the candle and see if you can keep the light of this candle to be lit. How you take care of it so that wind doesn't hit it. You don't move it around fast and, and erratic. Everything you do, you show a, a, a carefulness, what they call like a vigilance in life. Our way is based on the vigilance of the heart, wuqaf al-qalbi. 
that, my Lord, you put a light into my heart. Am I vigilant of that light? Am I at every moment thinking that this action, these things I'm doing, is it nourishing my light? Or am I actually really trying hard to blow it out? Ninety-nine percent of people on earth now, it seems like they're trying to blow out their light. If we're not doing something good, we're most likely doing something bad. And that light is being like flickering, flickering, until we take our last breath. And if we didn't build it, it's finished. Go into the abyss of nothing. Why Allah would wound that? To enter into nothingness? So then meditation and <coughs> contemplation was to reach a reality. This light that you have given to me, I want to nourish it. I want to safeguard and protect it. My whole life with the teaching of these guys will be, how can I do and what actions can I take that will let the light to become stronger. I don't want a candle anymore. It means their zikr, their amma, their actions, the things that they do, they make their heart not a candle. It becomes like a flashlight. Once it becomes a flashlight, it becomes like a spotlight. Because once their heart is like a spotlight, God sends them out onto the earth. You go wherever you go, the light shines so strong from you that other people's hearts can be sparked and illuminated. That's why keeping the company of good people. I show you, you show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. It's a fellowship. It's not a path by myself. It's the fellowship of the ring. That was good for the Lord of the Rings. Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's a fellowship of love. When we keep this fellowship, we're growing this light, blossoming this light. Then if the fellowship is good and the teachers are good, they teach you by good actions. Give food away, give some actions, do something that's not benefiting you directly. Do things that are sacrificing of your time and your effort and all of your ability. Not everything is about how to give yourself a goodness. You like chocolate so you come to an event and bring chocolate so that you can eat the chocolate. <laughs> you know they can't have sugar but he brings maple syrup all the time because he likes to have pancakes with the maple syrup. <laughs> so bring something and do things that not necessarily are for myself but for the, <laughs> for the benefit of other people. You do your zikr, we do our practices, then all of this breathing and meditating is my Lord send the light. I don't need to see, I'm not trying to meditate to, to open up and pretend like I can see things and then all of a sudden all my med meditation becomes sort of mental visions and mental insanity where I'm just going into the world of illusions in my head. No, I just want to reach your light, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Just give me a light, send the light into my heart, let me to feel the light coming into my heart and you breathe that light. And before you know it, you feel the movement of that candle in your heart. You feel that every breath is coming in, the candle becoming fierce. At that time, when the teachings of the shaykh, they become lit. When the student becomes lit, they feel an energy every time they breathe. Every time they do a practice, they're lighting up. Their whole back of their neck and their hands will heat up. Because they're no longer a candle, they're like a furnace that Allah sparked their heart and they have an eternal flame moving within them. An eternal flame. A flame that Allah granted to them from the Bahr al-Hayat. That you have reached my eternity. And from this ocean of eternity you are being dressed and blessed. <coughs> These are the realities we're looking for. When you meditate and contemplate and breathe and bring the light, they dress you from the oceans of nur. Your right eye has nur and their left eye has hayat. That from their right eye a light comes out from sifat al nur and puts light out. Because Allah dressed their reality with light. So anyone deficient in light, merely their associations can replenish the light of people. From their left eye is bahr al hayat. When Allah says everything perish but what? The holy face. 
who Allah's face? Allah's face unseen. But there must be a, a reality that can't be understood that reflects the creation. Where I created Adam in my likeness, that from my seven divine attributes I dress your face. That when they look at you, they're being dressed by my attributes. So from their right eye a nur comes out and light be given upon their reality. From their left eye Bahrul Hayat and oceans of Hayat come out and they reach towards their eternal reality. They feel the energy of that presence and that association so that they can take their candle from a temporary existence to an eternal reality where their candle now is lit like a flashlight and it's no longer going to be sort of moved by the wind. They become more and more firm in their practices and their belief. When it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger, this is a station we call faith. Faith is not something, I say I have faith. Go to the mosque and say, how many people have faith? 99.9% .9 say, oh well of course you have faith. Who said you have faith? Faith is not something you say you have. Allah says in Qur'an, tell the Arabi, no, he merely accepted what you're teaching. But Iman is a different level. I'm going to try you and test you with your life, with your possession, with your family, with everything. I'm going to test you like those who came before you. <coughs> Means that flame is going to be put to a big test. And the more they test them, the more they're consistent, more the difficulty coming. That's why when we started, the meditation isn't by a stream. The meditation is in, in, in oceans of conflict, in the oceans of chaos. Why? Because Allah said, I'm going to test you. If through testing you don't have the understanding of how to connect, you'll be lost with the first wind that comes. Oh, these people are all crazy, I'm leaving. To the benefit of who? You cut your own flame, you didn't cut them. So it means this life is about that flame. When we begin to understand how to nourish it, we practice, 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 you feel the light coming in. Maqam al-Iman is a light. I mean requires faith. Faith is something in the heart, not in the mind. Faith like love has to enter into the heart. We pray that Allah address us, bless us with a deeper understanding that these practices are to open the realities of the heart and they have a system, they're not making anything up. They have a system in which Allah sent them upon this earth that to open the hearts of people and open the light within their heart. This earth is becoming more and more dark. If you're scared of a virus, imagine what else is coming. You have to have a light within our hearts that you look into your heart and that you're no longer in the dark because the dark is scary. But if your heart is illuminated and you're looking within the heart, you see the light in the tunnel, around the tunnel and everywhere at the tunnel because your heart, your Ahlul Basira with the heart that sees inshaAllah. Subhanahu wa bika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بحرمتي محمد المصطفى وبسيرة سورة الفاتحة. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.